You think I'd trade you this, this beautiful cloth for them few measly skins? Not many beaver left in mountains. Too many hunters. Well, that's your problem, Injun. You want some more cloth? You bring us in some new skin. Good skin, savvy? But I told my wife here that I get a new bright cloth. Oh, get out of here. I got no time, no nothing for Injun. Take these skins with you. Oh, wait a minute, Vern. Party's been kind of dull the past couple of days. Well, Brother Mike, you found some more booze, huh? Yeah, I found some more booze. We go now. Oh, what's your hurry, friend? You can have all the cloth you want. Just give us some good pelts and we'll keep your scores till you bring them in. No, these wives. I don't care what they are. We'll just hold on to them till you bring in the pelts, huh? <laughs> no, Mr. Wilson! You come back here again, and I'll kill you! Hey, hey, what my brother's done! We'll kill you! You boys have a good time in San Francisco. And be careful of that Barbary Coast. Don't want either one of you shanghaied. Hey, Paul, you just relax. If yeah, a horse gets in any trouble, I'll take care of him, Bob. <laughs> oh, oh, you just make sure one of those spangly women don't take care of you. And get back as soon as possible. Now, business is business, but we need you back here in the Ponderosa. Now, get! <laughs> Hope they make out. Ah, uh, don't worry, Pa. San Francisco's no worse than Virginia City. <laughs> well, I'm gonna check on those new steers down at the bottom camp. I'll see you at dinner. Yeah, well, don't wait for me. I got some business in Virginia City. Wilson's. Wilson Station. Got drunk at them. They have guns. Namta's wife. My wife. And they did this when you tried to stop them? My wife. They have her. They will. You don't have to tell me. We'll get them. Can you ride? Namta ride to Ring Nose. For Braves. Ringnose is a hothead. Why didn't he go to Winnemucca? This is Paiute land, not Bannock. Namta say, Shoshone people not coward like Paiute. He say, Bannock's ride, kill Wilson men. They attack Wilson Station. This whole country will go up in flames. Come on, Bruno. We got to beat them there. Adam Cartwright. Ringnose calls Braves, Adam Cartwright. And we still have time. <laughs> I've tried to be friendly. I even offered him some of this good booze. Yeah. All right, squads, come on out. Outside, we're going to teach you some manners. Come on. Come on. Come on, you're going to have a drink. No. Look, when a white man offers you a drink, you take it. Let her go. Cartwright. 
What are you doing here? I said let her go. I wouldn't try it. Now drop it. Easy. Now kick it over here. You too. It's all this fuss over a couple of women. Indian women. Bruno, get him back to the Ponderosa. We'll take care of him there. Stole our will. Let's go get him. Go on. I'm sick. Phil. Phil, wake up. Those dirty score stealer. I'll teach him when I get him. We'll see about that Adam Cartwright. Hundreds of them all over the place. Coming right at me. All painted up and naked. Who was it? Winnemucca? Yeah. Yeah, that's who it was. Winnemucca. Oh, Winnemucca itself. <laughs> well, I had to get. I started to ride. I saw some of them break in the station and drag out, burn, Phil. I heard him scream. My own brother and my partner, and I couldn't do nothing to help him. It was off. But why? Why Winnemucca, of all people? Men, them Paiutes are running wild. Killed seven or eight men over in Sun Canyon. Seven or eight men, do you know who they were? Not all of them, but they flat butchered Joe and Ellie Lawrence right outside their cabin. Killing women. I don't need to know no more. Let's go get them. Yeah! Hold it, hold it. I agree. The Paiutes must be punished. If it's war, it's war. But you just can't stampede out the door. We've got to get organized. Maybe you're right, Major. You go ahead and start organizing. Well, I agree. I wasn't a Major in the Army for nothing. We'll do this the Army way. We'll get as many men as we can. Oh, we'll get you close to 100! Don't reckon we need that many to handle a mangy mess of Paiutes. But anybody who wants to join us, tell them to come along. We'll march at daybreak. <laughs> Mr. 
do it. You carry a lot of weight around here. More than anybody. They say you're the first citizen of Virginia City. Now, you and I, we haven't always seen eye to eye. But we both know that an Indian war would be disastrous. But, Ben, I just don't believe it's as serious as you make out. You didn't see them down there. Well, Ormsby's raising an army. It's hysteria. Hmm. Well, Ormsby's no drunken fool. He's a good soldier. At least he used to be. Oh, that has nothing to do with it. We just can't stand by and let them march. Well, did you talk to them? Well, there wasn't a chance of being heard. Anyway, I'm not the man for it. I need someone like you. Someone from town. Someone they know. Hmm. All right, Cartwright. I'll be there at daybreak. But uh, I don't believe there'll be much of an army once our brave soldiers sober up. Well, it doesn't take much of an army to start an Indian war. They'll be all right now. They're in good hands. I think it might be a good idea if you were to stay here tonight. Thank you, Adam Cartwright. Fools, everybody's gone mad. What's wrong? Oh, the Paiutes ran wild. Wiped out Wilson Station, killed seven or eight people in Sun Canyon, and now Virginia City's gathering an army to go after them. Well, it wasn't the Paiutes, it was the Bannocks of the Shoshone tribe, Ringnose's people. What makes you say that? Bruno, Numpta, their wives are inside being cared for. Why, what happened? Well, uh, Wilson, a drunken brother of his, they held him prisoner and mistreated him. So that's the truth of the matter. Well, why would Wilson accuse the Paiutes for what happened? Shift the blame from himself, protect his own dirty skin. Pa, we can't let him attack Winnemuck and the Paiutes. We gotta stop him tonight. Oh, not tonight. <laughs> Dozens of them were gathering when I left there. Drunken, loud, boisterous. Nobody could talk to them tonight. Well, what about Bill Stewart? They listen to him. Oh, I've already talked to Stewart. Oh, he'll reason with them in the morning. But we'd better be along, too. Nobody will believe it wasn't the Paiutes. I felt like killing those Wilsons myself when I saw the women. But why did Ringnose have to kill those people on his way back to the mountains? Uh. The primitive people, son. Primitive and proud. Once they've tasted blood. Sorry, Army. Where are all those men you promised me? Well, you know something, General. Overnight, most of them boys sobered up. <laughs> <laughs> now, we got enough. All I want to do is get out there and shoot me some Indians. <laughs> you may have your chance, Mr. Wilson, with a few dozen men against the Paiute Nation. Oh, we can... <laughs> What do you want here, Stuart? I want to stop you from making fools of yourself. Ben, ben Cartwright knows Indians better than any man in Nevada. Now, he tells me that the Wilson Station Massacre was not done by the Paiutes, but it was done by the Bannocks of the Shoshone tribe higher up in the Sierras. That's a lie. Well, I was there, wasn't I? Yeah, you were there, all right. Maybe they ought to know what you did there. Listen to them. If it wasn't for Adam Cartwright, this whole thing wouldn't have happened. It were his fault. What do you mean, Wilson? He came in just before it happened with one of his Indian friends. Said he wanted me to sell the in some booze. When I said I wouldn't do it, he said it had the whole Paiute tribe down on me. Huh. Man, I saw it. I was there. I saw them Paiutes with my own eyes. They took my brother and they took my partner and they tore him up in little pieces. Now we got to let him get away! All right, now. No time to stand here and argue. A few men go out, drunk and disorganized, against Winnemucca's warriors, You'll be destroyed. I tell you, the Paiutes are innocent. Cartwright, that massacre took place before noon. Within an hour, there wasn't a Paiute in town. And Wilson didn't get back here with the news until late afternoon. Explain that if you can. The Indians have ways. I thought so. Murder has been done by Indians. We move to punish them. All right, men, let's go. Just a minute. All right, Ormsby, go out to Winnemucca. But go seeking a parley, not as a war party. Find out what the Paiutes have to say about all this. You going to ride with us, Mr. Stewart? No, I'm not. 
I can do more for you by staying here and keeping in touch with the authorities in Washington. I will go along with you, Major. Yeah. My son and I. All right, we need every man. Those of you with horses mount up, the rest of you fall in. Carol! Fall in what? <laughs> With this, I go to fight Indians. <laughs> Signal fires. They've heard it's coming for miles. Fire! Fire! We do not know how many there are or what their purpose is. Papa will tell us. Diggers from Sun Mountain come. How many are there, Paco? Maybe three tens. Ben Cartwright and his son, the one called Adam, right at their head. Uh. Must Sharp Peak itself fall upon my father to make him see? I see nothing but a great mistake. It is a mistake that will kill your people. Even your friend Ben Cartwright rides with them. Ben Cartwright rides to talk. With a rifle in his hand? Would my young war chief see his people die? I would protect them. Since when is war a better protection than peace? We have asked for no war. We have killed no one. But the white man's army moves not toward the sky home of the Bannock people. They come toward us. Though we want only peace, we would be fools if we did not think that war might come. This we will do. My son will take the warriors of the tribe to the place of the tall rocks. Each brave will have a white man in his gun sights, but do not fire unless we are fired upon first. I and the other elders will meet below the rocks. We will take counsel with the whites. We will speak for peace. But should there be war, you are the war chief of our people, my son. Defend them. Call for a parley, Major. It's too late for a parley. We'll take him in. I wouldn't try it. What'd you say? Take a look around. One behind every rock. Treacherous devils. So what'd you expect? A welcome mat? Come along, Major. We'll parley. <laughs> It is an evil thing to see Ben Cartwright ride to war. I ride for peace, O oh Chief of the Piutes. Then my eyes fail me, for I see men ready for battle. Stop beating around the bush. Now look here and shut up, Ormsby. Do you want to get us all killed? The Paiute wants peace. We want peace. Will we talk? We will talk. Talking to them murdering devils. If they had me a clear shot at one, I might show them how to talk. Why? Look. I got a Paiute for you. Yeah. Well, this one's for my brother. Stop your firing! Stop shooting! Stop firing! Stop firing! Stop firing!
enough Indians for you, Mike. My son! No I... time for that! Son. Come on! These men, Hormsby too. It's a massacre. My son is dead. Dead. Stampeding out there. They're out of their heads with fear. We've got to do something. Yeah, well, you better do it quick. There's a couple of thousand Indians out there, and they're on the way here by now. Instead of cleaning him up, you better put a rope around his neck. What do you mean? He led us into a trap. That's what I mean. Everybody knows him, and the Piutes are thicker than blood. They killed his son. His son ain't dead. As soon as the shooting started, I saw his son run off the Indians. Talk, Wilson, but you better be telling the truth. Well, I saw Winnemucca drag him up himself. From the looks of things, it didn't take much dragging. Wilson, is this true? I wouldn't count on it, Ben. If Adam is alive, it'll just mean that a lot of people will ask questions as to why he was the only man spared. I don't care what questions people ask, just as long as he's alive. Ben, go back to your ranch. Go on, now. If the word gets around, it'll just mean trouble. Now, go on. You're letting him get away with murder. Shut up, Wilson. We need help, that's for sure. Charlie Hungerford commands a battalion of militia on the other side of the Sierra at Placerville. Send messengers there. I'll go. All right. We'll send a couple of men along with you. Come up to my office and I'll make out an official request. I know what to tell them. I'd rather put it in writing, if you don't mind. Have you gone mad? Be silent! Why does our enemy yet live? There are many weapons. Some take lives, some save them. We have beaten them. Everywhere they run before us. Even now the diggers cry in fear over what awaits them. Before morning their Virginia city could be ashes if we were to move now. It is plain to see the son of Winnemucca thinks he was sired by a fool, for he talks like one. Adam Cartwright, but for my hand, you would have long ago have fed the fires. Answer me in truth. If I can. Now that we have beaten them, what will the diggers do? You know that as well as I do. Tell them with your lips. They will send to California. The militia will come. The army. How many? A hundred tens. He lies. Let me kill him now. No. Are you a woman? Did not his father kill Grey Bear before your very eyes? My young wolf grows careless and he's howling. Winnemucca, speak to my father. There are men of honor in Virginia City. There can yet be peace. Can there be peace, Adam Cartwright? But there has to be peace. You can't fight the California troops. There is trees on the Ponderosa without number. They cannot fight. Did we not destroy them? Did not the remaining handful run back to their caves like cringing dogs? You fought a bunch of half-drunken miners out on a picnic, a lark. But next time you'll fight soldiers and they'll outnumber you two to one. Tell them, Winnemucca, I speak the truth. He speaks the truth. But Ben Cartwright's words hangs heavy on the ears of the whites. 
He will stop the army. He can't do that. Only you can. We will send word to him. We will meet him. He will know it from Winnemucca himself, that if the army from California moves on the Paiute nation, his son will die. Winnemucca has said it. Take him to his TP. Little Joe! We heard about the trouble in Sacramento. Decided horse ought to go on up to San Francisco. I'd come back and see if I could give you and Adam any help. Where is he? What about this holding him prisoner? Prisoner? Was he all right? Well, I received word through a messenger last night. One of Marquez bringing Adam to Truckee Rock. I'm to meet him there. Yeah, well, how did this whole not thing... Not now. I'll tell you about it later. Yeah. My son. Stay. Are you all right, boy? All right, Pa. Not the vigilantes run you out of San Francisco? Do the soldiers come from across the Sierra? They've been sent for. Then you will stop them, or your son will die. Winnemucca, we are friends. You must not do this. My people are my friends. Did not Ben Cartwright shoot a Paiute brave even as we parleyed at Sharp Peak? He would have killed my son. I have a hundred sons. But you will stop the soldiers, Ben Cartwright, for you shall have no more than two. How do you expect us to stop an army? Pa, Bruno. Bruno and Ringnose. If Ringnose were to tell the truth about Wilson Station, Perhaps the army will not attack the Paiute. But you must give us time to ride to the high mountains. We will attack no one. But we will defend ourselves in our homes. Winnemucca, I would talk to my son. You may talk. Looks like you got yourself a little hot water this time, older brother. Yeah, me this time instead of you. Hate to leave you this way, boy. I'll be all right, Pa. Junior here'd like to cut my throat, but Winnemucca won't let him. Said that young Wolf and Adam Cartwright used to ride the war show together as brothers. Children do foolish things, but they become men. We'll be back with Ringnose. What makes you think he'll want to come? He'll come whether he wants to or not. Goodbye, Pa. Joe. Right. Major Hungerford, didn't expect you so soon. We got here as soon as we could. Captain Kelly, we'll take a few minutes rest. Yes, sir. Lights out! Hoop, just now! What Mr. Wilson says, we couldn't get here too soon. You know Mr. Wilson. Oh, yes. Yes, I know Mr. Wilson. My son, Adam, told me what happened at his station. Hungerford, ask him how come his son, Adam, is with the Paiutes alive, when the rest of the men they caught were chopped to bits. He and his whelp led us into a trap. Major, it was not the pirates that raided his station. It was a party of bannocks, part of the Shoshone tribe. Quite right, you're all liar. Mr. Wilson. Major, I was there. I saw my own brother killed right before me. When a mocker and some pirates, they came in and shut up my place. It was not the pirates, it was the bannocks. And the reason they killed your brother is because of what you and he did to a couple of bannock women. The husband of one of them worked at my ranch. Look, everybody knows that he's been on the side of the pirates right along. Ormsby and his men were killed by pirates, weren't they? The pirates were defending themselves. They didn't attack Ormsby. 
My son, Adam, is being held hostage by Winnemucca. That's why we're writing to the Bannock chief, Ringnose. He can prove that I'm telling the truth. I suppose Ringnose won't talk. He'll talk. Look, he's not telling you a word of truth. I was there. I saw it Mr. all with my Wilson. own... Wilson. You open your mouth once more, and I'll have you gagged. Ben, I prefer to believe your story. But I'm under express orders from the governor of the state of California to attack the Paiutes and punish them. This much I can do. If you can bring me proof that it was the Bannocks and not the Paiutes that attacked Wilson Station, then I'll parley with Winnemucca and try to make peace. You must give me time, Major. I'll march to Pyramid Lake by the longer route. I'll stop once an hour to rest. More than that, I can't do for you, your son, or any man. I'm a soldier, Ben. I'm under orders. I hope you get to Ringnose and get him back here in time. Thanks, Major. You don't believe him, do you? If what he says is true, you'll go back to Sacramento with me, Mr. Wilson. In irons. Captain Kelly, on the truth. Leave us. It'd have been better if you'd lied. Now the soldiers are coming. You'll never see them arrive. If... Stay your hand. Already the soldiers march. It was your word that Adam Cartwright die. They are not yet here. Leave us, my son. Is there not a battle to make ready? Do you remember this knife? I remember. My father gave it to you. Yes. I got to return it to him now. Once the wild bear knew Washoe, now he is gone. The white man killed him. That is so. And then the antelope, who was the friend of the Paiute, he too is gone. White man kill him. That too is so. And now the great son of the Paiute weakens. And as it crosses the sky, even today will drop behind the mountains and be gone. Perhaps my father will return in time. The soldiers already march along Chief Truckee's River. Your father's in the land of the Bannocks. I would like to see your father. A man should see his friends on the day of his death. At the head of the California soldiers rides a man named Hungerford? I know him. He's a soldier. Is this the same Hungerford who defeated Shining Brow of the Cheyenne? It's the same. A hundred tens of men and more in cannon. All this to defeat an old man, his son, and thirty tens of Paiutes. Our small lives mean so much to your people. Don't fight them, Winnemucca. Wait. Surrender if you must, but give my father time enough to return with ring nose. There will be no more talk, even though I willed it. If we must die, we must die. For the ways of the wild things are the Paiute's ways, and the wild things, too, are dead. I am sorry for you, Adam Cartwright. For you are a friend and the son of a friend. But the first shot that is fired by the California soldiers will be a signal to my son. And you will die.
And even as you die, it will be like a small part of myself that dies with you. You are brave to ride it to the camp of the Bannock. Well, Bruno, is this the way the Bannock repays his friend? If you have anything to say, say it to me. The acts of the Bannock people are the acts of their chief. My son will die if the California army attacks. But more than that, the whole Paiute people will die if Ring Nose allows them to take the blame for the raid on Wilson Station. War is war, Ben Cartwright. Do you ask that the Bannocks walk into the white man's rope? My son brought back the wives of Bruno and Numta from the Dark Land. I ask the Bannock to do the same for my son. What about us, Ben Cartwright? What will happen to us? I don't know. The debt must be paid. Get Numta. We ride. <laughs> Sir, there's a lot of them. Mr. Kelly. Yes, sir. Any sign of Ben Cartwright? No, sir. The rear guard is looking for him. Well, we can't delay any longer. I have the men from Fort Alcatraz cut around to the high ground. I want a flanking fire on the Indians. Have Sergeant O'Banion move his field piece to the high ground on the other flank. Deploy your companies on both sides of the trail as foragers. Send the bugler to me. You'll advance at my command. Return fire if fired upon, but otherwise let no man fire without orders. Move your men out. Very good, sir. Sergeant O'Banion, move your field piece to the high ground. First platoon, give him support to his position. Then dismount and form his forages. Do not fire unless fired upon. Move him out, Sergeant. Yes, sir. First platoon, forward, here! I told you there would be. Many eyes to see you die.
Get you into the... Corporal Hollister, draw your men on the high ground to the right of that big rock. Carry on. Follow me. Come on, men. Fire is falling. Fall in. Come on, fall on with him, sir. Up here. Hurry up, hurry up. Fall in. Take an interval. Take your interval, men. Or Miss Forgers. Come on, man. Fire, Miss Forger. Fall in. Come on, fall on with him, sir. Up here. Hurry up, hurry up. Fall in. Already, sir. Very good, Captain Kelly. Or Miss Forger. Douglas on the advance. Follow me. Stand on the rock. Right? I'm gonna kill you. Adam? Adam, you all right? I'm all right. Pal, we gotta stop them. Listen. They've already stopped. Help us, what have we done? Is it true, Major, that it was all a mistake? Yes, Captain Kelly, it's true. Then I'd better not tell the men. You tell them, Mr. Kelly, loud and clear. I want every one of them to know what happened here today and why it happened. 
Yes, sir. What about the Bannox? I appreciate your honesty. That took courage. You will go to California with me. Major. What will happen to them? I don't know. They'll have to stand trial. I'll do what I can for them. There's been too much killing already. Pa. Your son lives. We mourn your dead son. I do not mourn for my son. I mourn for all my sons. Marshal. Morning. Just tell me where I can find the offices of your newspaper. Turn it to First Street, about a half a block down. You can't miss it. Thank you kindly. Hey, can I help you? Maybe the boy needs a hand. Oh, well, the Cartwrights can take care of themselves. Well, sounds like he's getting the worst of it. Yeah, sounds like he is. Yeah. Looks like somebody in there is hard to convince. Say, uh, you are the marshal here, aren't you? That's right, stranger. Well, uh, shouldn't you go in there and break it up? Reckon not. People in this town mind their own business. Come on, let's get out of the way. Little town walking around this town. No business in that poker game. Look, I told you to stay out of it. Listen, little Joe. Paul told me to take care of you, and that's exactly what I aim to do. Yeah, well, I can take care of myself. Little Joe, you get up on that pony right now, or else I'm just going to naturally clobber you. Who's the big fella? Oh, him? He's another Cartwright. I'm new in Virginia City. So I noticed. It's quite a town. Who are the Cartwrights? Oh, I reckon you'll find that out soon enough. I haven't asked you who you are, have I? <laughs> oh, that's right, you haven't. Maybe you shouldn't ask so many questions. Like I said, this is the kind of town where folks mind their own business. Mind telling me whose uh, horse I'm holding, ma'am? Well, you haven't been around Virginia City very long. A couple of hours, that's all. Judge Jeremy C. Billington. Oh, is that so? Uh, the C stands for Clarence. Judge Jeremy Clarence Billington. Judge Jeremy Clarence Billington. He's the judge here in Virginia City. <laughs> yeah, so I've noticed. I'm his wife. The judge says I'm a big help to him in his career. Oh, I can say that for myself, ma'am. Virginia City Superior Court judges, many friends in Virginia City, have prevailed, have prevailed upon him to again seek office in the coming election as judge of the Superior Court. <clears throat> Very nice. <clears throat> There you are, my good man. Oh, thank you, sir. Thank you. Minnie, how many times have I spoken to you about talking to strange men? 
I wasn't talking to him. He was talking to me. <laughs> if you're... If you're trying to sell shares in your diggings, old-timer, I'm not interested. Well, as a matter of fact, you're looking at the most unsuccessful prospector that ever blistered his hands on a pick handle. And what brings you to a newspaper office? Your letter offering me a job. What's your name, friend? Sam Clemens. Sam Clemens! Well, I figured as long as I was starving, I might as well do it sitting on my backside at a job I know something about. You didn't strike it rich, huh? <laughs> Good looking press. No, all I did was prove how little an Eastern Tenderfoot knows about mining. Sam, it's good to see you. And I think you're going to like Virginia City. Well, I've been uh, studying some of the people. Uh, how often do you publish? Every day. Every day? A <laughs> little one-horse town 2,000 miles west of the Mississippi? Sam, the way we see it, the Mississippi's 2,000 miles east of Virginia City. <laughs> Sam, you're looking at the only Bible the miners around here have any time to read. Well, what if they can't read? Then they get someone who can read it to them. <laughs> I like that. I think I'm going to like this town. It's a city, Virginia City. Virginia City. A noisy, rough lady with a lot of pride. I think I'm gonna like her. Over here. Just eating my supper. You mean drinking it, don't you? You be mighty careful of that campfire. As soon as you get through eating, you clear out of here. I mean to, mister. Hey, we got a lot of cattle here on the Ponderosa. If the fire got out of control, we'd be in trouble. Reckon I know that. Anyhow, I'm just passing through. Well, the next time you just go around, you hear? Come on. <laughs> High and mighty. Think I ain't got no sense. Telling me to put out a fire. <laughs> Them cartwrights. Oh, get there, come up and someday. Must be the spirit of some engine come back to Earth. Here. Things aren't always just what they seem in this town, Sam. Well, I'm learning fast. The Cartwrights like to fight. Judge Billington's word is law. And uh, his wife... Say, where'd she come from, anyway? She was in the chorus of a traveling girly show. Oh, <laughs> that figures. You know, I, uh... I might write a series of articles on the colorful citizens of Virginia City. Which would land you in jail or up on Boot Hill. Let's get back to paper. Right. Quite a lot of characters you got here. What kind of things they like to read? Oh, anything, as long as you keep it humorous. These men see death and disaster in the mines every day. They want to read something that'll make them laugh. And make them forget that maybe tomorrow they'll be dead or broke or both. That's right. Well, it's about time you fellas got home. What's new in town? Still as a tomb, Paul. Yeah, nothing happening. Yeah. Hey. Watch your men, Captain High Valley. What are they doing there? I don't know. Let's find out. All right, come on, let's go. <laughs>
Get that stuff in the wagon, quick. Hey, what are you men doing here? Wait a minute, Cartwright. We don't want any trouble. You're trespassing on private property, mister. Well, you fellas own so much land around here, it's kind of hard to figure where your property ends and the rest of the world begins. Well, if you have any trouble figuring it, mister, we'll be happy to oblige you. Oh, we're pulling out. Now, what were you doing here in the first place? Doing a little sightseeing. Thought one day you might want to sell off some of this land. What have you got in the wagon? Just some prospecting equipment. Uh, let's not hold them up, boys. The man said they were moving on. The next time you, uh, you want to know where the rest of the world begins, you might try asking. Oh, no. What is it? Looks like some kind of surveying equipment. Well, look like them guys was lying when they said something about buying some land. Oh, they're interested in land, all right. I just don't think they're interested in buying any of it. A two bits, old timer. Oh, uh, uh, half a drink, maybe. I can't recommend it, but help yourself. Oh, oh, thank you. That's mighty sociable of you, stranger. Mighty sociable. <laughs> I, uh, I don't know you, do I? Nope. Then uh, how come you? Oh, well, uh... let's just say that today I'm filled with a milk of human kindness. <laughs> Don't taste much like milk. <laughs> or human kindness, either. <laughs> I, I sure needed that one. Covered a lot of territory today, huh? Oh, all the way from Ponderosa. Ponderosa? I didn't know the Cartwrights allowed prospecting. Well, they don't. They run me off at high noon. But they'll get their comeuppance. <laughs> I never saw a spirit dog in a place yet. The trouble didn't bust out. A what? A spirit. Uh, this one lives in the trees. It, uh, it come out and watched me all the time I was fixing to leave. Uh, who watched you? The, the spirit. And uh, what did the spirit look like? Oh, oh, it was, uh, it was big and black and active as two tomcats on a back fence. How big? Well, uh, it could have been about ten foot, maybe. Maybe even more? Oh, oh uh, could have been uh, 15 or 20 foot, maybe. And wild, huh? Oh, wildest thing you ever saw. Wilder than a warshoe zephyr. It flit from tree to tree with a manzanita bush in each hand and a wagon tongue in his mouth. Hmm. 20 feet tall. That's what I call a man-sized spirit. <laughs> Reported to be 20 feet tall and covered with long black hair, the wild man is said to flit from tree to tree carrying off cattle and picking his teeth with a wagon tongue. By all this wonderful whatever inspired this. Well, you said your readers like to feel laughs. Just so no one questions your sources. Well, I admit it's secondhand reporting, but uh, my source was pretty reliable. That is until he had a couple of drinks under his belt, and then he uh, tended to exaggerate. <laughs> well, it's plain enough to see what they were up to. You follow High Valley, bridge the Truckee, and drop down the West Slope. A natural route for cutting a road right through our property. Yeah, a road or a railroad. They intended to sneak in, make their survey, and sneak out before anybody ever saw them. Well, the question is, why and for whom? Uh, come quick! Come quick! Too many oh, people! 
Keep up, Sing. People everywhere, all over Ponderosa. Stop, Sing, you've got a bigger imagination. Hey, Hey, Pa, you and Adam better get out of here. There's people all over the place. They come to see the wild man. What? What? What wild man? Look, right here in the Enterprise. Wild man of Washoe, loose on Ponder... Now, what fool would put a thing like that in the paper? Now, well, there's the name of the man who wrote it, Josh. Sam, take a look at this telegram. The San Francisco Bugle. Confirm wild man story. Flooded with inquiries. <laughs> Big city newspaper, too. Uh, which one of you fellows is Josh? Oh, that's sort of a pen name I used. Uh, did you, uh, write this? The Wild Man story? Yeah, sure I did. How'd you like it, Mr., uh, I'm sorry, I didn't get your name. Uh, uh, Cartwright. Adam Cartwright. Uh, I'm Sam Clemens. Uh, I haven't been in Virginia City very long. Then I'm afraid you're not going to be around very much longer, Mr. Clemens. You see, this little, uh, contribution to literature uh, brought 500 people tramping across the Ponderosa this morning. As many as that? Yes, they uh, ruined the field of hay and scared the wits out of a herd of cows. Uh, we had to rescue four of them out of the duck pond. Uh, my people are still trying to round up the rest of them. Well, it was just a bit of sagebrush humor. We, we had no idea folks would take it seriously. <laughs> yes. Well, I want a retraction of the uh, wild man story to keep these fools off our land. Oh, well, I'm, a, I'm afraid that's uh, kind of hard to do, Mr. Cartwright. You see, uh, I got the story from a very reliable source. Then you leave me no choice. I presume you know how to handle a gun. Oh, now, hold on, Mr. Cartwright. Uh, I haven't got any gun. Uh, maybe you're pretty good with your fists, huh? Why, sure. Uh, when I was uh, steamboating on the Mississippi, the fellow didn't like me very much. We had quite a fight until I tripped over a rope. Of course, he outweighed me about five pounds. Uh, come to think of it, uh, I sort of hate to mess up these new clothes I just bought. Couldn't we uh, settle this a little more peaceably? Are you trying to make a fool out of me? Now, I want that retraction in tomorrow's newspaper. Well, you're making this a little difficult. Uh, you see, the Enterprise never apologizes for stories it prints. It's uh, kind of a policy. I see. Well, maybe I can help change that policy. Now, you understand about that retraction. You, you, you'll, get your, uh, you'll get your retraction, Mr. Cartwright. Thank you. You all right, Sam? Whew. I kind of like those Cartwrights. That Josh fella. Who have you got there? Found this boy roaming the hills. Is he all right? He's all right. Take him in the wash house. Let Hop Singh wash him up. Come on. Seems to me this Josh fella had you buffaloed, Adam. Well, what are you going to do when a man won't fight? What kind of a man is he? A coward? I don't know. Anyway, he promised to print a retraction. Well, I certainly hope he does. I don't want some fool reporter printing stories that'll send more people out here. Well, it's hard enough as it is to keep an eye out for strangers. Now, listen, boys, I want you to be careful. Don't ride out by yourselves anymore. If someone is going to pull a land grab on us, they can't hide their hand much longer. <laughs> Make a fine supper, wash a dish, no time for foolish men. Now, just settle down, Hopsing. We got enough trouble around here already. You got trouble. Hopsing got the foolish men. Give a boy, you say wash up clean? Boy? Ain't no boy around here. Oh, Adam found some lad wandering around. 
Now, what would you do with him, Hop Singh? Him, no, boy. Him, girl. What? You go look-see, please. Well, Adam, if you don't know a boy from a girl... <laughs> Shut up. Where is he? I mean, she. Still in the wash house. Well, bring her in here. No can do, boys. A burn up close. All fairly bad shape. You know, I think I'd better see what I can do about this. Maybe you just better stay right where you are. <laughs> Put this on and come on out. I tell you, I found her in the brush, and that's all I know. Yeah, well, you should have asked me, Adam. I could have told you it was a girl. <laughs> well, what are we going to do with her? Oh, well, we'll get rid of her. This way, Missy. Folks, no relatives? Well, perhaps, perhaps you'd rather not talk until morning. No. I think your friends. My name is Rosemary Lawson. My father and I left San Francisco to come to Virginia City by wagon. My father was a school teacher. But he wanted to look for silver. We didn't have any trouble until we got into the mountains. Then one night, we were camped near the Truckee River. It was very beautiful there. We were very happy. We sat by the fire, and Daddy sang some old songs to me. Then I went to bed in the wagon. Later, I was awakened by pistol shots. I looked out and there were strange men in camp. They killed my father. Um, well, I think you've, uh, you've talked enough for tonight, Rosemary. Perhaps saying, see that you get some hot food and uh, prepare that room at the end of the bunkhouse. Rest well. Remember that Philly colt we found in the upper pasture last spring? Some skunk of a hunter had killed its mammy? Yeah, I remember. She was scared to death, too. It took us all day long to run her down. They did more to her than kill her father. I'm Dr. Ephraim Lovejoy. I represent, sir, a group of distinguished scientists. Scientists? Adam, what's in that wagon? 
Some kind of steel hooks. Grappling hooks? I'm going to fish for the body in the lake. The body? What are you talking about? With the body of the wild man, of course. Didn't you read about it in the Territorial Enterprise? I expect to get off an immediate report to my scientific group. What does it say, Paul? Wild man of Washoe is dead. His body having been consigned to the waters of Lake Tahoe, it will now sink to a depth of 200 feet where it will remain motionless and cased in a block of ice while the pressure encountered reduces it to the stature of a child. I thought there was going to print a retraction. Yeah, some retraction you got, Adam. Surely, gentlemen, for scientific reasons. That article uh, was written by a lion newspaper reporter named Josh. Now, head that buggy back towards Virginia City and fast. Well. And put out the fire. Looks like you got your retraction. Josh killed off the wild man. Well, the next time I'm in town, I think I'll pay this Josh fellow a little visit. And I tell you, my friends, that never in the history of Virginia City has there been a greater need for a guardian of the rights of the working man. The miners who are putting the name Virginia City on the map. And those rights will be guarded. Now then, gentlemen, step up to the bar. Drink up on me. That's right. Drink up, boys. It's on the judge. Yes, sir. There's two ways of winning an election. One's by going around making speeches, and the other's by sitting still and making friends. Friend, here's mud in your eye. Well, I remember you. And I remember you, Mrs. Billington. Friend, see you on election day. I uh, didn't invite you to sit down. Thank you anyway. You're a very good health man. And to the election of Jeremy C. Billington. You didn't come here to buy my vote. Well, he's the best man, isn't he? And what I always say, let the best man win. Don't you worry about it. My husband always wins. You know, uh, Mrs. Billington, it's a funny thing about elections and contests of any kind. You never really know how they're going to work out. Now. Back a couple of months ago, I was in California, a place called Calaveras County. And the folks there seemed to think that they wanted to hold a sort of a, a little uh, frog jumping contest. Yeah, I heard about it. You're the fellow thinks up all that junk. Signs himself Josh. Well, I uh, wouldn't exactly call it junk, ma'am. All right, what would you call it? Well, uh, I'd call it some uh, pretty fancy writing. Take my word for it, it's junk. Well, maybe you're right at that. Smart fellow like you shouldn't ought to be wasting his time writing. Or any other kind of silly stuff like that. <laughs> well, uh, what should I ought to do? You see, I, I tried prospecting. I couldn't make a dime. Prospecting? That's almost as bad as writing. There's a lot better ways of making a pile than going out in the hills digging for it. <laughs> hey, yes, I guess there are. Now, you take politics. There's a big future in politics. Well, there... There has been one for the last uh, 5,000 years. <laughs> no, I mean right here in Nevada. A fellow like you could go places in Nevada. Well, you see, there are a few places I'd rather see first. Well, what kind of places are you talking about? Oh, uh, London, Paris, Rome. You see, uh, when you're from Missouri, you've got to get out and take a good look at the world. Well, whatever for? Oh, to understand the, your own hometown, the friends you had when you were a child, Sailing down the, the Mississippi in a raft and, oh, you know, all kinds of junk like that. Believe me, you won't make a dime doing that either. The money's out here in Nevada. Like uh, when you get elected judge? What's wrong with being elected judge? Oh, nothing, except the way it's done. You may be able to buy some votes with us, but uh, you won't be able to buy what we print in the Enterprise. One way or another, my husband's going to be elected judge. Isn't that uh, sort of up to the voters? Well, I'll, uh, see you on election day, ma'am. Oh, and just for the record, Mrs. Billington, I may never make a dime writing all that junk, but, uh, here's one vote that's sort of hard to buy, and I, uh, 
like to pay for my own drinks. Sam, I need a filler for page three. You know, something short and snappy. Yeah, I know. Give him a few laughs, huh? What's eating you? Oh, I don't know, Bill. I guess I'm getting a little tired of writing sagebrush humor. But you write this kind of stuff so well. Well, that's just it. It's, it's stuff. I like humorous writing, but I like to say something along with it. You make the miners laugh. That's the important thing. It is? How about making them think for a change, huh? About what? Well, the election, for instance. About the right honorable Jeremy C. Billington. I don't think anybody in Virginia City knows there's another man running for judge. Well, there's Henry Walker, of course. He runs against Jeremy every time and always loses. People are getting pretty used to electing Billington judge, aren't they? Yes, I guess by now they are. Then why is he spending so much money on his campaign this time, hmm? Now that you mention it, it is kind of unusual. Yeah, some of those Paris gowns that Minnie Billington wears. Miners are so busy looking at her low necklines, they forget who's paying for them. Are you afraid the Enterprise won't print any story you happen to dig up? You know, I had a little bet with myself that you'd go along with me. Sam, this is a newspaper, not a comic strip. You come up with a story and an Enterprise will print it. Just as long as I sign it. Just as long as you sign it. All right. Well, let me see. Let's get out of here. Just a crease. He ain't hurt bad. Better have a good story this time, mister. I've got nothing to say. Well, you better think of something. Look, Quick. why take it out on me? The man you want is back in Virginia City. Get his horse. Ah, my dear, today you are the epitome of feminine pulchritude. Don't you talk dirty to me, Jeremy Billington. <laughs> I won't be long, my dear. Lash. What's the meaning of this? We'll ask the questions, gentlemen. I wouldn't like to cite you into my court for threatening. You set out. Uh, we didn't come here to threaten anyone. We came here to warn you. Now, you stay away from us, Lash. There'll be no land grab in the Ponderosa. Next time your men start shooting at us, we won't be bringing them back to you alive. <laughs> I uh, think railroad stocks took a little drop. It just doesn't make sense, Pa. Why would they bypass the main railroad line just in order to cut across the Ponderosa? 25,000 acres of prime timber and grazing land, that's reason enough, isn't it? Why, the railroad people could grab that much land just by checkerboarding a right of way across our property. Well, by checkerboarding, they could seal off every other square mile of land. 
That's right. Yeah, but, Paul, would any court in the land approve a right-of-way that ain't nothing but a front for a land grab? Not unless they got to a judge. Hey, you mean Judge Billington? I don't think it was any coincidence at all that we found the judge in Lash's office. I wouldn't put it past the old scallywag. Is anything wrong? Hey, Adam. Hey, take a look at what happened to that little boy you found. <laughs> well! <laughs> Hey, you sure look pretty. Thank you know, you. I don't understand how I made such a big mistake. <laughs> and that Hobbs thing is a pretty good outfitter. Oh, he bought a lot more than I need. I don't know how to thank all of you. Well. Somebody come here. Ride up on a mule. That's all we need. Another scientific expedition. Rosemary, let's find out who this is. Newspaper reporter. Afternoon. We, uh... We printed the retraction about the wild man. So we noticed. Uh, would you care to meet him? <laughs> Wouldn't that be a little hard to do? After all, it was uh, just something I sort of dreamed up. Well, Mr. Clemens, I think you should be given the opportunity of meeting the wild man. There she is. You mean she's... Uh... That's right, Mr. Clemens. There's your wild man. 20 foot tall with a manzanita bush in each hand and a wagon dog in her mouth. <laughs> <laughs> well, I don't know what they're talking about, miss, but you're the prettiest wild man I ever did see. Thank you. Well, Mr. Clemens, to what do we owe this visit? Well, for one thing, I thought you ought to know there are warrants out for your arrest. Warrants? Well, I, uh, I think we ought to talk about this inside. Uh, Rosemary, tell Hopsing we'll have a guest for dinner. Yeah, I'll take him, you. Thanks. Come on. Mr. Clemens, I homesteaded the Ponderosa, fought Indians and drove off outlaws. I'm not going to let Lash or anybody else grab my land. Well, if the railroad got a legal right away and checkerboarded the Ponderosa with land holdings, what would you do then? Fight. We've got guns, ammunition, and friends. You can't fight the law with guns. I don't think you have the proper respect for guns, Mr. Clemens. But you'd be surprised how many people have. Oh, I got a lot of respect for guns. Good balance. The thing is that sometimes you get right smack dab into a fight that you can't settle with guns. Or with uh, fists. <clears throat> That's right. Now, if our hunch is correct, everything depends on defeating Billington in the election so he won't sell out to the railroad. Looks to me like we ought to get started then before the election. <laughs> you can't defeat a politician with guns, but you might be able to with laughter. You mean laugh him out of town? Something like that. Sometimes the pen is mightier than the sword. Well, I don't know, Mr. Clemens. I think I'd have to put my money on the sword. Yeah, as up against that crowd, I, I think I'd count on my guns. Oh, wait a minute, boys. Sam, if you want to fight this thing out with your pen, well, that's up to you. But we'll be around with our guns to help you, if you need us. Fair enough. And I sure would like to know how you're going to go about it. Just keep reading the Territorial Enterprise. <laughs> a personal pronoun runs for office in Virginia City by Josh. And Jeremy C. Billington, friend of the miner, the mill worker, and the back alley dog, <laughs> spoke at a political rally last night. Most of the speech was devoted to the nobility of Mr. Billington himself. An alarming number of sentences began with the pronoun I, which qualifies the judge as a professor on the subject of personal pronouns. <laughs> During the discourse, it was possible for this reporter to discover that the professor is against sin, gravy on the vest, and overflowing water closets. <laughs> hey, this fellow Josh gets right to the seat of the trouble, don't he? <laughs> I guess our friend Josh knows what he's doing after all. <laughs> Josh claims Professor Personal Pronoun will provide more free air, stronger zephyrs, taller mine mules. He's making a fool of you. That doesn't mean a thing. I'll beat Henry Walker by 3,000 votes. Billington, I've got too big a hand in this game to take chances. No quack newspaper reporter is going to stand between me and the Ponderosa. Doesn't 
ain't too bad. Well, you had enough? No, Bill. Billings got to be beaten for the good of everyone in Virginia City. And I think I might just have the story that'll do it. Sam. Sam! Want to see Judge Billington? I think the judge is retired. That's all right. He's expecting me. from Lasher's office. It's about time. Is it in gold? Yes, it's gold, all right. We had to collect it from one of the gambling places. That's, that's why I was late. Well, let me see it. Let me see it. And there she stood. Nightgown torn right off. Oh! Gold pieces six inches deep around the prettiest bare feet in Virginia City. Oh, I wish I could have seen that. <laughs> uh, money may be the root of all evil, but a lady without a nightgown sure takes the curse off it. Oh, and how? Uh, maybe Mr. Daniel Ash's foreman has a case pending in Professor Personal Pronouns Court. But if he has, we're sure this was just his tribute to feminine beauty. Oh. <laughs> Beating up that reporter didn't stop him from writing more stories. Well, there's one way we can stop him from ever writing another line. That might be better all around. He won't amount to much as a writer anyway. I can make sure of that. Get him out of my way. Permanently. <laughs> Do not allow yourselves to be tricked by the special interest. Spearheaded by a libelous newspaper determined to overthrow the will of the common people. If I am elected, we will drive these thieves of liberty out of Virginia City. And once more, every man will be a king and every woman a queen. <laughs> With deuces wild, just my friends, my friends. <laughs> Get up. My friends! Try anything and people get hurt. It's my friends, I believe in fair play. That's my motto. Fair play. What do you charge for it, Billington, huh? <laughs> my friends, my friends, do not believe the lies perpetrated by a man who refuses to sign his own name to his articles, but insists on being called Jock. <laughs> my friends, my friends, listen to me. Told me all your lives, my oh, friends. Shut up. Your friends, my eye. Let's get out of here. Where's Sam Clemens? He's covering the political rally. Aren't you folks taking a big chance coming into town? Well, apparently not as much of a chance as Sam Clemens. We heard he was beaten up. It didn't stop him. He's still going strong. Yeah, well, how long can he keep on taking it? It must have been quite a rally. I gotta get the story on the presses. All right, now! Get the 
a story out. Sounds like you started a riot. What happened? Read about it in your next edition. Adam Joe, you next. Go! Knock off the fast probe, will you? Hey, Josh, I sure am anxious to read that story. Josh. That's what's wrong. What's wrong? I knew it all along. It just wasn't right. Hey, don't stop writing. Come on, finish it. For sake, Sam, finish the story. Joe, when I was a boy living on the banks of the Mississippi, I used to dream about becoming a river pilot someday. Well, well dream about it some other time. Hurry up with that darn story. Huss, watch the back door. Josh, get down! You have to live on the Mississippi to know what it's really like. The way those big old boats come down the river, the leadsmen standing out there on the bow, taking the depth and singing it out to the pilot on the bridge. On a summer evening, it uh, has the sound of music. Music? If you don't get that story finished, the only thing you're gonna hear is a funeral march. I can still hear it. Mark four. Mark three, quarter less three, half twain, quarter twain, Mark twain. Got it. You sure almost did get it, Mr. Clements. No, you don't understand. I mean, I finally found my name. Wait, your name, Samuel Clements? No, Hoss. I mean, my pen name, Mark Twain. That means river running clear, two fathoms of water beneath the keel. That's what rivermen call real clear sailing. Everything's pretty clear around here right now, Mr. Clements. I don't know about that name, Mark Twain. Seemed to me like I've heard a lot better names than that before. You sure that's a fitting name for a writer? Well, I don't know, Hoss. We'll just have to give it a try. You got the finish of that story, Sam? Everything but the byline. Sign it, Mark Twain. Mark Twain? Well, it's better than Josh. Well, what happened to Samuel Clemens? I guess we've seen the last of Sam Clemens. You know something? I like it. Mark Twain. Mark Twain. My business to go out of town. Yeah! There she is, Sam. Out off the press. Professor, personal pronoun won't be around anymore. <laughs> By Mark Twain. Well, it was quite a fight, Sam. Yeah, I guess you were right at that. The pen is mightier than the sword. Anytime you want to visit Virginia City again, you just write us and let us know. And be sure to sign it Mark Twain so we know who it is. Bye, Sam. Bye. I sure will. Bye, Sam. I'll sign it Mark Twain. Thank you. Hey, what they feed you up there in San Francisco, anyhow, little Joe? Too much and you're skinny as ever. Yeah, a little uglier, maybe, huh? And a little bit smarter. I got $5 more head this year than you did last year. Hey, you hear that, Adam? I think that calls for a celebration. 
Yeah, you know, I think it's time little Joe took a look inside Julia's palace, huh? Adam, I said a little celebration. <laughs> It's a fair fight, at least as fair as it could be, with John Mullane. He's not here too bad. Come on, let's get him over the Doc Martens. Every day you're more like a mad dog. Now, you will not provoke any more violence in my place. Do you understand that? It is amazing to me, my dear Julia, how such tender sentiments can come from trash like you. Welcome to Julia's Palace, Mr. Um... Cartwright, Joe Cartwright. Oh, one of the Cartwrights from the Ponderosa? Yes, ma'am. This is a real nice place you've got here. I'm sorry I messed it up. Oh, don't be sorry. After all, you were defending my honor. I've never been here before. Well, you must come back sometime. I'd like that. As my guest. I'm Julia Bulette. I'd like to repay you with the dinner here at my place. Tomorrow night? Yes, ma'am. Better get the brandy, Tom. Uh, we are of the same kind, you and I, Julie. Where men are concerned, we are the messengers of destruction. You do it through the heart, I do it with a gun. Does it matter to you which way it happens to this young man? Hmm? Pa, you think Julia Bulette might have known my mother? No, I, I don't think that's very likely. Yeah, why not? They both lived in New Orleans. Yeah, they might just as well have lived on opposite sides of the world. Yeah, what do you mean? Uh, what I've been trying to say is that the only thing that Julia Bulette has in common with your mother the fact that she's a woman. Uh, she's the most beautiful woman I've ever seen. Yeah, she's a very beautiful woman. Well, come on, Pa. You better hurry up if you want to get to that town meeting on time. Come on! meeting that will be attended by Virginia City's leading citizens. Now, uh, sure you don't want to come along? I know, thanks, Pa. I, uh, I got some other plans. May I? Miss Pulet? Why so formal, Ben? It used to be Julia. Get up! I'm sorry. Shall Julie. we go in? Well, I... Oh, yes, I've been asked. My invitation said it was supposed to be a meeting of the leading citizens of Virginia City. What did yours say? Well, uh, mine said the same. Shall we proceed? like everybody's here that's gonna show up, so we might as well get things underway. And I guess we all know why we're here, too. Under the ground of Virginia City lies the greatest bonanza of silver known to man. Most of what's on top, though, is nothing more than trash. 
the first thing to do is among ourselves, by bringing in effective law and order. Now, starting with effective law and order, we'll have to raise a permanent city fund to interest the kind of men that we want. Ben, can we expect help from the ranchers? Well, the ranchers want law and order in town just as much as everybody else. Of course, we'll do all we can, but uh, I don't think that'll be, that'll be enough. Yes, I realize that. Uh, as a matter of fact, uh, that brings me to... Uh... That brings you to why I was invited here? The uh, kind of money you'll need will have to come from the people who mostly make up this town. The men who work in the mines. They will listen to Julia Bulette. So, gentlemen, I'll take care of raising the money and uh, the moralizing I'll leave to you. Oh, I know you'd love for me to stay, but I do have a saloon to run. As well as an appointment to keep. very wicked town here in Virginia City. <laughs> so while the blue noses sit up on the hill and cry about it, I think we down here on C Street can do something about it. Here, here. Now, the first thing Virginia City will need will be a little money in its pocket. I'm going to make the first donation. Tom, get me a bottle of brandy. Mm -hmm. A bottle of brandy. Now, how much are you willing to give this fine old Virginia City brandy? One hundred dollars. One hundred dollars? This is Julia's palace, not another saloon. Now, come on, let me hear a respectable bid. All right, two hundred dollars. Better. Two hundred and fifty dollars. Three hundred dollars. Five hundred dollars. Sold. Julia Bulette, five hundred dollars. Now, I'm giving it right back to Virginia City. Who's next? Two hundred dollars. $250? $300. Oh, come on now. $350. $500. Oh, $500 sold to little Joe Cartwright of Ponderosa. And I give it back to Virginia City, too. All right, that starts the open bidding over again. Gladys, come on up here. Make them pay till it hurts. Come on, little Joe. OK, fellas, what am I bid? Sally, we're going to need something to put all this money in. Oh, that's going to be fine. Thanks. So, one, two, three, four, five. I, I don't carry that kind of money on me. Can oh. I give you a note for it? No. You saved my honor, I'll save yours. Now we're even. So your daddy forgot to give you your allowance, huh? Look, Mulane, just because you shot up a few miners, that makes you the most feared man in town. I'm not shaking even a little bit, so don't get in my way. You don't think I can make you shake like the others, huh? I think you only stay alive because no grave will have you. I think you'd better go. You were uh, going outside, my friend? Uh, fine. No, he's, he's going with me. Monsieur? Would you rather spend a few minutes with him or an evening with me? Some other time. That is a promise from me. Comfortable. I'll fix us a brandy. No thanks. Oh, you drink so little. Gamble even less. You know, it's a good thing the finer side of a man burns out in his youth, or I'd be out of business. Well, I hope you stay in business a long time. I'd hate to see you leave here. There are not many around here who would agree with you. Well, they snub you on Sunday and come to your place on Monday. The world's better off without that kind of hypocrite. Don't try to change the world, little Joe. Enjoy it the way it is. You'll grow older, and then you'll be no different from all the others. I'm sorry about that. Eh? Huh? Oh. You could have had your pick of any man in Virginia City. Why'd you ask me here? 
John Milan might have killed you. Milan? How'd you happen to make friends with a man like that? It's a long time ago. There's companionship between us. He's not fit to wipe your shoes. Don't be too sure. Julie, just to break up a fight was... Is that the only reason you asked me up here? It was then. Is anything wrong? Mm. No, quite the contrary. You know, you remind me of what I always pictured my mother would look like. Mm. She was part French like you, came from New Orleans. And she was a very beautiful woman. <laughs> All right. Tell me about New Orleans. <laughs> I'm afraid it wouldn't be as your mother saw it. From different sides, a mountain never looks the same. I don't understand. You will. Goodbye, little Joe. Go home where you belong. Coming back. Huh? Just relax, Malane. I believe I'd do like he says if I was you. Me and Adam figured you boys would be about ready to settle something. Now, why don't you settle it like gentlemen? A horse will hold your coat. Once I've told him a thousand times to keep those elbows in. Well, Joe's got to learn to fight a lot dirtier than that. A couple of beers, Tom. Kid's got lots of grit. One of these days, he's going to be able to whoop that Frenchman. Yeah, but this wasn't the day. Tom? Bye-bye. Thank you, Tom. We'll see you. All right, Hoss. I told you I'd work it out. Oh, but it's not the money, little Joe. I was planning to give more than that to the fund anyway. It's just that I think you're beginning to make a fool of yourself. Why? What's wrong with her? Oh, nothing, nothing. She's a fine woman. All right, what is it then? Well, well it, it, it's, it's just that... Well, she's seen much more of the world than you have, boy. I see. That makes her bad. Wow, Doc. <laughs> Good to see you. Come on in now. 
What brings you our way? Well, I just come down from the mines at Gold Hill. Oh, how are things down there? Ran into a few cases of fever. Fever? Was it bad? Well, it's hard to say if they'll build up to epidemic proportions. So far, just a few scattered cases here and there. Oh, I'm glad of that. Yeah. You're looking well, Ben. Feel wonderful. Could have felt better. Good. You've come a long way. This house, Ponderosa, three fine sons. Now, Doc, a man with all the work you've got to do wouldn't take a long ride just to talk old time. Now, sit down. How about a little refreshment? Well... Hop Singh? How about a little cool water from that good well of yours? All right. Yes, sir, Mr. Conley. Glass of cool water for Dr. Martin. Yes, sir. Lie away. Now then, what's in your mind? Well, for one thing, the committee wanted you to know we received a letter of acceptance from Brad Olins. No, oh, that's fine. Olins is one of the best. Yes. I only hope we can keep him. No. What's to stop us? Well, money for one thing. Oh, Miss Bulette's bottle of brandy got us off to a fine start. But it can't stop there. We've got to have the cooperation of the people. I sure hope we get all the cooperation we need. Ben, you know that most of the people of a community keep in step with the leaders. We're just beginning to find some of our leaders. You, for instance, Ben. All right. All right, Doc, keep talking. Well, I just don't know any other way to say it. People of the town are talking about little Joe and Miss Bulette. Now, matters concerning my sons and myself are nobody's business but our own. No longer, Ben. It boils down to this. If Virginia City will keep her house clean, she has a chance to become an important part of this country. If she doesn't, she'll stay just a dirty little town on a mountain. I'll talk to Julia, Doc. Brandy, Ben? I promise you it's the very best. I'm sure it is, Judy, but uh, no thanks. Mm. I'm finding out the Cartwrights aren't much of a drinking family. No, that's true, but uh, very much a family. Go on. Well, Julia, you know, the boy's young. He's, uh, he's full of life. Well, I can understand how he could appeal to you. It has. You know, with you, this is a... This is a passing thing. It's different for little Joe. Different how? Did he ever tell you about his mother? Yes. He never really knew her. She died when he was, he was very young. Now, you were the only other woman of French ancestry he's ever known. That and the fact that you also come from New Orleans well, makes you something special in his eyes. But not in yours. No, I guess not. Have you told little Joe to stay away from me? No. I prefer him to hear it from you. And just what is it you'd uh, like him to hear from me? Well, the difference in your ages, your ways of life. Not to mention uh, the fact that the whole town is talking about us and what that could do to a young man's reputation. Yes. There's that, too. Mm -hmm. I'll think about it, Ben. Julia, you're wonderful. I knew I could count on you. <laughs> you know, this really will be best for you, for everybody. Tom? Bye, Mr. Fairbrand. Tom? Has little Joe Cartwright been around? No, but I passed the word along that she didn't want to see him anymore. I changed my mind. But Miss Julia! I said I changed my mind.
Hello, little Joe. Well, where have you been? Virginia City. Ran into Doc Martin. And several more cases of the fever. He's getting real worried. Oh, Joe, I've been, uh, been waiting here to talk to you. Oh, what about? You've been with that woman again. Her name is Miss Bulette. Now, Joe, you're a, you're a grown man, and I, I know you'll understand what I'm going to say to you. I know already. Pa, she's not the kind of woman that people say she is. Not anymore, anyway. Well, look, I know she, she wears fine clothes, and she talks good, and she lives well, but, you know, a, a scar doesn't disappear just because you wash it. I guess that's how it was with my mother. Keep your mother out of this. I've heard you and Adam talk how there were places you couldn't go, things you couldn't do because... Because she was part Creole. It was a language and the ways of a people that some folks didn't understand. Nothing more. I know that. And still, there were a lot of people that hated her. Well, sometimes I see a scar, you know, you've got to be looking for it. Little Joe, I... <laughs> No, thank you, Alfie. I don't want no more. Only one piece cake? This dang cake's flat. The cake is not flat. For two days now, whole land is flat. No fun, nobody eat, no good without little Joe. I just talked to Charlie. He's been in town. Seems the kid's having himself quite a time with Miss Bulet. They've been seen just about everywhere. You must be enjoying this. You know, it's doing something for little Joe. Defending somebody he feels close to, he'll get over it. Do you think so? Well, let him find somebody else to defend. I'm not going to have that woman beating me over the head with my own son. And we're going to bring little Joe back from town if we have to drag him every step of the way. my boy when the whole mob is trying to take him apart? Well, what that mob was doing to your boy is nothing compared to what he did the inside of my opera house. He wrecked it. Take a whole week to put it back together again, and it was nothing but uncalled for violence. Uncalled for? What do you call what you did to Miss Boulette? Now, wait a minute. What's all this about? Perhaps I can explain. I have a box loge in this theater. Mr. Romley had it draped so it would be separated from the others. A new policy of the management. I accepted it, but my escort didn't. Well, with the district judge and, and the new marshal coming in a couple of weeks, uh, the committee... Ben, you know what I mean. Let's go. Let me know how much the damages will be. You're coming home with us. You can make me go home, but you can't make me stay there. All I want is a chance to decide a few things for myself. I'll get the carriage. Now, why do you have to fight me and the town using a boy as a weapon? It's the only weapon I can use against you and win. <laughs> it's quite a victory, isn't it? Ben Cartwright's son, Defending the honor of Julie Bulette. It's even more of a victory. I have the help of his father. Ben! Oh, Ben! The fever's not an isolated thing any longer. It's all over Gold Hill. And it is an epidemic. We'll be in Virginia City by morning. Chances are it's the water. There's plenty of pure water in the Ponderosa. Adam Hoss, get the hands together in the ranch and get some water down here. 
Yes, all right now, folks, I'll need all the help I can get. Beds for the patients, men to transport them, and women to tend them. What I need is good water, shelter, and volunteers. Now, who'll be next? The palace will be set up for anything you need right away. Well, thank you, Julie. All right, who else? Ye shall keep all my statutes, so the land shall not spew you out. Well, the Lord was talking to Moses, not to Virginia City. You taught me that that meant everyone. So what's happened to the good people in this town? They're about to go to work, little Joe. Julia, don't bother moving those gambling tables. They'll do nicely as beds. All right, Doc. Thank you. It's going to slosh around a little bit, but that'll have to do. Take her on down and fill her up with water and take her on into town. As soon as it's empty, bring it back. Peter. No, no, Let me show you. Easy when you know how. You watch me and I'll show you how to load barrels. You can't use your back strength and your muscles. You gotta use your head, Hopsing. That's why you use a your head your way, I use a my head my way. Yeah. Rustle up enough strength to take this medicine, and I'll uh, let you take advantage of my good nature. <laughs> well, we're saving two for everyone we're losing. In an epidemic like this, that's a victory. Well, those that are healthy are beginning to leave this town in droves. It's a dirty little town on a mountain. I guess that's all we were meant to be. But if to change it means crucifying people like her, I say it's not worth it. Hey, Doc, I got you three more volunteers. Oh, good. Oh, Pete, I thought you and your crew were pulling out. Well, maybe it's like little Joe says, Doc. It's our mountain. We dug right under insides with a little more than our bare hands. Well, it... It ain't decent to let some stinking thing like a fever chase us off. Mr. Cartwright there can show you plenty to do. You come with me, Pete. Joe? I've got something for you to do. Take a break. No, Doc, there's still a lot of work to be done. That goes for Julia, too. You two have been working for days. I need help, not new patients. You do as you're told. We've been asleep a long time. Yeah, I dreamt I was in New Orleans. Yeah, it was a beautiful place. Virginia said he's a long way from New Orleans. Well, I'm gonna go there someday. Maybe to live. This is where you'll stay. No, a man goes where he wants to be. I've watched the way you handle people here. Man stays where he's needed. And you? When a town starts to grow, I look for a new frontier. It doesn't have to be this way. I get.
Your mother was French. Do you understand the language? Some of it. Cela aurait dû arriver il y a des années. It should have happened many years ago. Mm -hmm. Someday you'll know what I mean. You'll also know why you must stay and I must go. We'll be needed inside. You know, I think you're gonna make it. Pa? Well, I checked most of the mines. And there's not one new case of fever, Doc. More than half the men have gone back to work. Ah, good. Then we'll move the last of our patients over to the meeting house. <laughs> Boys, let's move these blankets and beds over to the meeting house. Well, it was a fight, Adam, but it's the kind of fight that's good to win. Well, we uh, lost one, too, Pa. Well, what do you mean? Uh, little Joe came back to the ranch this morning and he took his things. Now that uh, this is over, uh, Julia, this, uh, this thing with little Joe, I should never have interfered. Oh, I'm disappointed in you, Ben. Disappointed? A man of strength should never let sentiment interfere with his convictions. I'm the same woman I was before the fever. Well, I haven't changed either. And nothing has changed between us, but I... I won't gamble with something I can't replace. If it's little Joe's wish, you're welcome to become part of the Ponderosa. That's quite an offer. Especially since you don't think I'm good enough for him. Whether or not you're... good enough for little Joe is... It's something only you can decide. Tom, I want some champagne. Harry, let me have a tune, a lively one. As soon as the patients are moved, I want you to clear out this mess and put the gambling tables back in their places. I'm going to put on a night Virginia City will never forget. Well, after the fever, that should be a great celebration. Celebration? Who said anything about a celebration? This is going to be an execution. Julia Bulette, destroying the sweet innocence of youth. What's the matter with me? I'm having fun. You call this fun? You're acting like a... Go ahead, little Joe. Say it. Mr. Cartwright, I think I've told you to stay away from Julia Villette. It has been a short life for you, my friend. Let us hope it has been a pleasant one. John. Listen. I listen. I listen about this important thing I must do for you in Sacramento City. And I discover it is something which could have been handled by mail. John, please, don't, John!
Julia, you all right? It isn't a bad one, more, Sherry. Go upstairs. I'll, I'll fix it. Julia? Leave me alone. Julia, I did this for you. You want to do something for me? This bracelet, the necklace, they arrived today. A present from an old friend. They're diamonds, little Joe. That's all any man can do for me. No, you don't mean that. Why shouldn't I? That door you came through, it works both ways. I think you'd better use it. Yes, Julie. You destroy with a heart. Hmm? I used to wonder why it was I'd send you away and then be so happy when you came back. Perhaps that is because we are cut from the same piece of cloth. Perhaps it's because in order to hate you, I had to hate myself. As you said, we're very much alike. One cannot change this, Julie. One can try. I don't want to see you anymore, John. <laughs> You've said this before. I never meant it before. We have been together too long, Julie. We have no escape one from the other. Goodbye, John. Julie. I have little which belongs to me. But what I have, no one will take away. No one. You shouldn't have taken on Malene alone. Well, I beat him, didn't I? Little Joe, they, they're having the fanciest meeting you've ever seen over at the community hall. Everybody's patting each other on the back for stopping that epidemic. Paul's right up there on stage with them. He's going to make a speech. Now, you wouldn't want to miss Paul making a speech, would you? Everybody's patting everybody on the back, huh? That was a real fine meeting. Come on, Joe. Oh, you know, you're right. I wouldn't want to miss it. As nobody, Virginia City has a right to thank more than Ben Cartwright. Yeah. Thank you, Mr. Romney. If we've done anything... Yes, that... sir, boy. Thank you, Mr. Romney. Oh, and thanks to you, too, Dr. Martin. And I want to give a special thanks to all you honorable citizens. But how about giving a little thanks to the person who did the most to save this stinking town? How about some thanks for Julia Bulette? Oh, what's the matter? Don't you have the guts to admit when you're wrong? Well, Virginia City's fire engine company's been needing an honorary member. How about it, boys? Well, the lady isn't going to know anything about it until we tell her. Come on! Little Joe, it, it was you who got us here, so you ought to be the one to say it. Well, this isn't just for what you did for Virginia City during the epidemic. Well, it's for all the things you've done for everyone in this town. That's right. It's not a diamond necklace or a, or a bottle of champagne, but it's the best we've got. What do you say, boys? 
Three cheers for the first honorary member of Virginia City's Fire Engine Company number two. There's no diamond necklace that goes with this either, but I'd be especially proud if you'd consent to be my wife. Uh, what Miss Buett is trying to say is, champagne on the house. Let's get it. <laughs> Having faith in no one carries a special kind of security. You and your son have destroyed it. I'll never forgive you that, Ben. Hello, Ben. George. Ben Cartwright, this is Brad Olin. Howdy. Well, howdy. Nice to meet you. You got in with a new judge, so we swore him in right away. Well, there's some nice things about you. Nice to have you with us. There's my son, Joseph. How do you do? How are you? You're uh, about a week early, aren't you? Oh, a week early, but a day late. Oh? <laughs> what, do you, what do you mean? Julia Bulett was knifed and robbed last night. How is she? It's bad. Doc Martin's with her. A couple of miners saw a tall, dark man coming out of her place just about daybreak. John Mullane. Oh, that's the name. We followed him up this way. He's probably headed for Lakes Crossing. Me and Adam will show you the way. Oh, that's fine. Oh, we'd better get going. Oh, Joe. Miss Bulette sent word she'd like to see you and your dad. Ben. You've been asleep a long time. Looks like I win a battle and lose the war. I'm sorry. Everyone is. Everyone? Hmm. If New Orleans could only see me now, huh? Little Joe. He's here. I want to see him, Ben. Ben? Last night, you and the rest of Virginia City gave me a present. Now it's my turn. I'm going to give you back your son. Get me some brandy, Joe. I shouldn't be giving this to you. No. Oh, this is the way I live, kid. <laughs> Are you gonna be all right? I don't care. Couldn't have happened at a better time if I'd lived to be a thousand. <laughs> we beat him, Joe. We beat the apple knockers. What? <laughs> the high and mighty blue noses. We took them for the ride of their lives. <laughs> that play of yours. Bringing them in to lick my shoes just when they were ripe. <laughs> They meant every word of that. Sure they meant it. It makes it so rich. <laughs> They'll hear me laugh. 
laughing every time they pass my gra grave. <laughs> the biggest laugh of all. <laughs> Your old man. That night you were up here, I told you it was just for laughs, remember? I never intended to see you again. I never wanted to see you again. <laughs> you... <laughs> oh. you better go, Joe. The doctor wants me to rest. I'm coming back. Well, we got Malayne. He had our diamonds in his saddlebags. <laughs> 